Welcome to our business track of the Data Science Salon YouTube channel. We have Sierra Cosme, Enterprise Data Strategy Engineering uh, Scientist at CBS Health for this presentation. AI and ML are top of mind for leaders across academia and in the industry, and many have tried and failed several times before successfully deploying models and bring real business value or have an impact. Sierra is going to talk about key factors leading to successful model deployments, and she will also share important considerations to ensure the model management is successful. Enjoy the presentation. Good morning. Uh, this is Syra Cosme. I'm a senior director at CBS Health. Um, I will be speaking uh, around considerations for successful model management. Today, um, AI and ML is top of mind. For executives around within the you know across industries and uh, success being su successful in those engagements is important. Uh, they, you know we have seen a lot of failures that happen. Uh, I will be talking about a few things that will set you on the right path. Uh, things that you should be thinking about before you start working on your algorithm or start building your models. So. Um, Four main topics for today, uh, just really setting the context around the model development life cycle, um, how, uh, how the process works, it's an iterative process, um, and just thinking about the two phases uh, from an experimentation and design perspective, uh, feasibility assessment, doing the, doing the pre-work before the model is even deployed and used, and then the second phase uh, in my mind is uh, when the model is deployed, how can we automate and build uh, checks and balances so that we can refine the model with change in business? Uh, and this really leads to transparency, uh, reproducibility, trust, and reliability of your models, which is essential in for any business. So to start with the model development life cycle, um, the, 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 the process is iterative. So really the first step is to understand the business problem. Um, talking to business about where the bottlenecks are and uh, what are you trying to build and automate? Uh, what, are you, what is the business problem you're trying to solve? How, uh, how is it going to impact the users? Who's going to use it? Uh, how, how would it be used in the field? How to interpret it and so on. Uh, the second step really is once your business has an idea or once you have a business problem that you're trying to solve, Understanding how the data will be available for uh, measuring and tracking and uh, making predictions or making recommendations. Uh, sometimes if the data is not available when the decision is made or when the prediction is made, really having the infrastructure around data enablement would be important. And how does, how does, um, and having a good understanding of how you want the decision uh, or, or what is the cadence? How do you want the algorithm to be deployed in a batch process? Understanding the service level agreement, for example, is it a real time model deployment? Is it a batch process? And there, these, these considerations are huge because they lead to your uh, investments. So it, you know, if it's real time, obviously you're thinking about different infrastructure, uh, different requirements and cost, uh, costs as well. Um, as the data scientists are doing the work on the model development, uh, a lot of time is taken by data preparation, getting the data in the right format, get, getting the data in the right um, at the right level, uh, at the right aggregation, and then just starting to think about other reference data or other um, other type of information or metadata that may be required, and then. And then you have the data scientists after that engineering work is done. Uh, it, it could be separate data engineers that do that work or the data scientists who are able to do the data preparation. But really the next step is modeling the alg modeling and algorithm development. You may end up with a few algorithms that you are considering. And then um, there is a feasibility assessment process that you should be thinking about, thinking about in the field how the algorithm is going to make that decision and what is the metric that you're tracking? How would you assess the quality of that algorithm? And thinking about uh, not just the algorithm metric, metrics for the algorithm in terms of accuracy and 
uh, you know, other uh, precision metrics, but thinking about the business metrics that this is impacting. And then that's what you can use to evaluate your algorithm. And there's a there's a feedback loop going back to business with with that and working closely with the business uh, uh, with the SMEs in the field to see whether the algorithm output of the algorithm makes sense. How do you how do you do the thresholding? How do you do uh, how do you uh, deploy and make those decisions? Uh, model deployment and monitoring is the final step. Once you've made a decision which algorithm gets deployed, you start to work on the deployment. If you have a good um, pipeline, MLOps, Dev DevOps, and Data Ops. Uh, capability within the organization, this cycle is reduced because everything that you're doing is trackable, reducible, your uh, your code is uh, code and data, uh, and uh, your environments are easy to uh, set up and reproduce. So I will go into the first step where uh, we are, you know, thinking about experimentation and design. This is an idea still where um, you are thinking about building uh, an algorithm that will improve your business in some way. The big, big, um, uh, the, the main thing here is just really understand, understanding the impact that this model will have on your business. Setting the right expectations, it may require literacy or change management because it may change the way that people work in your organization. And then it is also, um, you know, you may have a change management process as part of, you know, outside of the algorithm development, you may have to establish the change management uh, for your business as well. Uh, once you have a clear view of what you're solving, uh, what the high level metrics are, uh, setting the right expectations, then you start to think about building the algorithm, doing some feasibility assessment. There may be multiple ways of solving the same problem. Thinking about cost um, and the effort and the value. So really thinking about the ROI of your uh, process would help you get ahead of any un unforeseen costs. Um, for experimentation and design, going a little bit deeper, uh, I think the best thing is, the first step is really understanding the process. How, how are you doing the work today? How will it be supported in the future? How is, does it change the work for people who are in the field? So if it's an augmentation of a business process, uh, who's, who's day-to-day -day work is being impacted? Which applications are they using? Uh, where does the algorithm finally get deployed? And then also um, having a good view of how, how will it be used? How are you going to train your um, workforce uh, with the new uh, the, you know, algorithm and how will uh, you measure the success? You may be targeting, uh, so it, it doesn't have to be a problem. It could be some optimization that you're doing. It may be a problem that you're trying to address, or it may be something you're trying to automate. It's a tedious task that you know you want to take away from uh, everyday work uh, and any inefficiency in the process that you're trying to solve. So really being, uh, really being able to articulate what the problem is, what is the uh, what is the inefficiency, and what is the improvement. And that will help you understand the return on the investment because uh, model build, uh, it's not it's not simple, it's not cheap. And, you know, being uh, successful, uh, just making sure that you're doing this initial step will really help you get to a place where uh, you understand what the risks and issues are in the future. The big one also before you start any work is really understanding the data where the data lives today, which application, is it uh, an operational system that you're extracting the data from? Is it a data warehouse? If you're getting the data from your warehouse, what are the transformations that were done uh, if the model is ultimately deployed into the front end application? So really tracing the lineage and the transformations will be essential. Uh, you can't build a model from a process data asset when the model gets deployed into a, a front end application where that cleansing hasn't happened. So really understanding how the data is captured, the path to uh, the, the form where you can start building your model, uh, thinking about the majority of that process, how would you get data to the, access to the data for building the model as well as access to the data in production and just all of the integration points that have to be enabled 
for the final application. Outside of the data, like I said, managing change is also important. So you should start thinking about what is the business problem that we are trying to solve? Whose, whose work, whose daily work is going to change? Uh, how to set the expectation? Are they going to get now efficient in their work? Is there more work for them to do? Uh, do they have to do more complex work? Uh, because some of the tedious or uh, time consuming work is getting automated. So that does require change management or um, from business rather than just the technical team who's building the algorithm. Also, um, being realistic about the, the task that's being automated is essential. A lot of times people overestimate what the machine learning model or uh, can do or uh, can really achieve. So really understanding the complexity of the task. So if it takes human uh, a few minutes to make that decision, uh, you are really talking about a very complex algorithm. Uh, if it's a simple task uh, that's just a few steps and, you know, it's easy to automate, uh, you, you, you may be more successful. So when you're thinking about the complexity of your algorithm or the task that you're trying to automate, maybe you want to break it up into smaller tasks that can be automated individually. And then you're building a stack or suite of, uh, suite of uh, those models that can get the final uh, answer that you need. And this is really essential because sometimes you will try to solve a problem that's bigger than what, um, you know, what an algorithm can solve. And there may be some business rules or some simpler ways of filtering and pre-processing before you even uh, apply your algorithm. So those are essential things to think about. Outside of that, um, thinking about how the model will be deployed, if it's something that requires real-time output. So model will be deployed in a real-time application. Uh, the work around that automation uh, is, is very different. If it's batch, there is a different um, way of achieving batch and real-time. And you know this is really, um, it, it, sometimes it's 10 times more expensive to get to real-time versus batch. So really understanding with business whether you know, usually when you start having the conversation from a business perspective, people want real time, um, but really having a good understanding of do you really need near real time or do you need near real time, which is not millisecond SLA, maybe it's a few second SLA is acceptable. The way to enable that would really reduce costs and so on. And batch obviously is, is, uh, is very efficient as well in terms of costs. Um, Final one is ROI. Um, knowing how many people this is going to be impact. So if your algorithm is running every day and it's only making two predictions a day and it uh, makes uh, you know, uh, a prediction that saves you, let's say 10 cents per prediction. So really understanding what the return on investment is. Maybe it's an algorithm that's making very important decisions and they're um, you know, a large amount of money and uh, you're really getting your return on investment within a few years. I think really having a good understanding upfront is important. If you're automating something that is going to take a huge budget to implement and really the, the, the final business value is not getting, you know, not, not there or you're not able to recuperate your investment for tens of years, then, then it's really not an investment that you should be thinking about. And that's really where experimentation design, feasibility assessment can help you. Uh, you learn about where the issues and um, uh, issues can occur, and then you can really uh, make a decision early on to not pursue something if the ROI is not seen. Going from uh, initial experimentation and design, you've decided or you have a couple of algorithms that you feel like um, are good candidates for deployment. You may define your metrics, business metrics that could be valuable in tracking uh, and then implementation, it, you know, design experimentation, you know, if you are following data ops, DevOps and ML ops processes, you're making your process reproducible then implementation, design to experiment, to design to implementation is a, a quick cycle. And also uh, with the new capabilities on the cloud, having um, uh, the ability to deploy the models 
very quickly is also uh, possible. So uh, thinking about what are you going to monitor? So you need to monitor the model, how, you know, how it's performing. You need to model the data, the features that are input to the model. Are they changing in some way? Is your environment changing? Does the model need to be refreshed um, because your business has changed? Uh, we all have seen drastic change this year in the last few years with COVID, right? Uh, a business changes, the volume of uh, activity change and your algorithm was built to see a certain volume has, uh, you know, features that deviate in a certain range and with your business changing you're seeing that the, the variable input variables are drifting and then you really have to uh, rebuild and redeploy your algorithm so having efficient operational uh, processes uh, to build and deploy the model and the data will be very critical for turning things around very quickly when the business changes some things that we can uh, you can start to think about uh, when you're thinking about implementation and monitoring of your algorithm, uh, thinking about your infrastructure, that's big. You may need, um, you know, you may need infrastructure for in a different type of infrastructure for building your algorithm and maybe a different one for deploying uh, because you may be doing some compute that builds your algorithms, gets the parameters, but for prediction, you, you don't require that. Uh, their cloud really provides you an acceleration. If you're not on the cloud, how would you get the hardware to do the model build and so on? Having those things, uh, uh, thinking about that is important uh, for the cloud. Infrastructure is scalable, so you have the opportunity to scale it up and down and have some cost benefits there. Uh, other, other considerations uh, around infrastructure, thinking about managed versus your own infrastructure. So if you're on the cloud, are you managing the pipelines or are you using native services provided by the cloud providers that give you the capability of an integrated solution? So thinking about that is important as well. Uh, besides uh, infrastructure, uh, data access, like I said, is important. So understanding where your data is coming from. Is it an operational database that you would need access to? Is it uh, an API? Is it a flat file or a reference data asset that you may be able to pull in from a storage device? So having clear view of the data flow or the data process is very important as well. Feature tracking is uh, tracking data, uh, input data uh, to your model that are being used as features. Um, you need to understand how your environment is changing to be able to make sure that the model predictions are still relevant and they can be used and applied in the correct way because your assumptions, uh, feature tracking will help you validate your assumptions uh, around the time when the model was built. Model monitoring includes uh, monitoring the deployment of the model, the infrastructure, the pipeline, and then also the model itself predictions, the output of the model, you would wanna capture the output of the input and the output of the model for audit reasons, for compliance reasons, for transparency and so on. So having some sort of logging mechanism of your inputs and outputs to your model is going to be very important. Uh, as data scientists will tell you, uh, once you deploy something in the field, uh, you may want to also improve the algorithm. So it, maybe it's a decision that uh, is getting automated and your algorithm has some edge cases where it's not able to make good decisions. Having some way to provide that feedback from the application is very important. Uh, maybe it's an augmented workflow where you're making recommendations to the user for the user to click and you know for you to know which, which recommendations were better than the other and, you know, some way of uh, either during testing or, you know, within the application where the model is deployed, having a feedback loop would allow you to um, allow you to just make your algorithm better over time because you're, you, you are really collecting more and more data that will improve your uh, performance as well. Also, um, model is, uh, you know, it's not, it's never the case that you build and deploy a model and you never go back or change it for years. You have to think about how you will refresh your model, how your business is changing, how your data is changing, how your um, consumers are changing. So you may have to think about 
uh, how often you want to refresh or re you refresh your model or maybe rebuild or deploy a different algorithm that may be performing. A lot of times uh, what, what people will do is that you may deploy one or two different algorithms that were candidate solutions and you may be able to see in the field which ones are uh, able to make better decisions and based on some approval cycle, you may be able to switch out your algorithms uh, uh, given that your business metrics are uh, doing better in one way or the other. So to wrap it up, model development life cycle is, uh, is really iterative process. Um, and it's, you know, it's tied very closely with the data life cycle and develop DevOps uh, to make it reproducible, to make it explainable, unbiased, secure, and reliable. You would want to track your model, your code, your data, and then uh, also have uh, the DevOps uh, practices that will help you um, provision infrastructure, deploy your model, monitor your model, and really uh, going from feasibility to assessing your solution and having approval process. And then big one is really the change management for business that you have to make sure that um, when the algorithm is deployed, people know and understand what the recommendations are out of the algorithm, how to use them, how to interpret them, and um, and um, and really really help business change uh, change any bottlenecks and help with the efficiency of deployment. I'll pause here and we will have some questions. We'll open it up for questions. That was a presentation by Sierra Cosme, Enterprise Data Strategy Engineering Scientist at CVS Health, and she talked about key factors in leading successful model deployments, and she also shared the important considerations to ensure that your model management is super successful. If you enjoyed that presentation, make sure to sign up to subscribe to our channel below right there. Thanks.